Being one of the world leaders in tire manufacturing was, and still is, one of the most challenging tasks that Michelin has faced. In an era like the 1970s when the transport industry historically experienced rapid growth, supplying all the cargo units with efficient and quality tires became a rather complicated task. Due to this, the French company had to get to work to develop the most durable continuous-use tires, specially designed for long-distance transportation. Achieving this posed a challenging task, filled with adversities because, although the company could manufacture tires that met the requirements, testing their creations in real-world conditions was highly complex. Stay with us and discover the story of the Curious Mobile Laboratory developed by Michelin to test truck tires. The peculiar story of this vehicle unfolded in the 1960s and 1970s. During that time, the enactment of new regulations for European transportation allowed truck drivers to carry loads of almost 40 tons. This meant that safety became of much greater importance. With tires being a central issue and practically a key factor for the success of these new transports, aware of these changes, tire manufacturing companies paid special attention to the matter, with Michelin being one of the most drawn to the subject. As leaders in this industry, the French company set out to develop components capable of withstanding continuous use, primarily focusing on long-distance journeys, but above all, on being particularly capable of handling stressful situations, such as high speeds. This last aspect piqued their interest the most, so their goal was to test their new creations at incredible speeds, with a target of at least reaching 180 kilometers per hour. Needless to say, this was beyond the capabilities of practically any truck of the time, even if it were possible to improve transmission ratios. Additionally, attempting such high speeds would expose them to enormous risk if the tires were to fail, resulting in a catastrophic outcome. Therefore, the final decision was to build a highly specialized testing platform which became one of the most remarkable projects in automotive history. Named the Michelin PLR, an abbreviation in French for a term very familiar to Fast Haven, it was unveiled in 1972 after three years of development. Its structure was based on the luxurious Citroën DS brake, mainly because this particular model featured a very modern, hydro-pneumatic suspension, which would become the most important element for Michelin's engineers. The appeal of this suspension was its excellent ability to absorb shocks and maintain a constant ground clearance, regardless of the load, type of surface, or road condition. Likewise, its peculiar appearance earned it the affectionate nickname Centipede because it incorporated five axles divided into three rear driving axles and two front steering axles. The issue was that the DS model couldn't provide enough space to mount an entire testing laboratory on it, so drastic modifications to its body were necessary. To put it into perspective, the regular model was almost 5 meters long and about 1.8 meters wide, while the final PLR measured 7 meters in length and approximately 2.5 meters in width. Additionally, the weight of this unit increased from just reaching 1.2 tons to about 9.5 tons when fully equipped. If you've reached this point in the video and enjoyed it, we would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. Due to the pressing need to achieve high speeds, it was clear that the four-cylinder engine that the DS model came with from the factory would not be sufficient. To accomplish this, a more powerful powertrain had to be installed. And the choice of that moment was the American Chevrolet V8 engine, a 5.7-liter engine from the Chevrolet Corvette model, capable of producing up to 350 horsepower. Furthermore, this centipede 
received not one, but two of these powerful engines, so its cooling system required up to five radiators. Interestingly, both power units were installed directly in the rear, as two fuel tanks totaling a capacity of 180 liters were located in the front. Surprisingly, this vehicle had a considerable fuel efficiency, consuming one liter per kilometer. However, the most interesting part is that the vehicle was powered by only one engine, coupled to a four-speed automatic transmission, also from Chevrolet. So what was the purpose of the second engine? The truly significant aspect of this project is how the new tires intended for use in heavy-duty trucks were tested. Instead of simply mounting them on the axles of a truck, which, as mentioned, was potentially risky, the French engineers placed a testing station mounted in the center of the vehicle. And this is where the second Corvette engine came into play. In addition to powering the station, the engine also operated the mechanisms necessary to raise and lower the test tires as needed. Through this suspension system, pressures of between 2 and 3.25 tons could be applied allowing for simulations that closely resembled real-world conditions. All of this was equipped with measuring instruments with which it was possible to shut down the additional engine in case of a dangerous situation. Although it may seem like a completely absurd idea, the Michelin PLR operated successfully, fulfilling its purpose throughout the 1970s one of the main reasons it lasted so long was that it allowed realistic high-speed testing while minimizing collateral damage in case of failures. It was so safe that in the event of a tire bursting during testing, it could continue to drive normally, remaining stable on its 10 wheels. It's worth noting that Michelin had previously ventured into a similar project, emerging around the 1950s. It was an equally peculiar prototype known as the Willamay WR8. The main differences were that the tires being tested had to be mounted directly on the vehicle's axles, and it only reached 150 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, although there is no exact record, it is said that the subsequent oil crises forced Michelin to abandon this project and consider static solutions. Fortunately, this peculiar mobile laboratory has survived the test of time and is currently one of the main attractions of the French brand, even being showcased during exhibitions and select events. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it and want more similar content, please subscribe to our channel. We also invite you to visit our secondary channel, Gear Unlimited where you'll find a wide variety of topics. We appreciate your support and interest. Keep on trucking and stay tuned for more.